there once again, people, and welcome to yet another episode of the QC Extravaganza playthrough, whatever you may call this thing. So, um, this time around, we're going to be checking out something rather big. Yeah, this one's actually a rather large-scale, um, file. <laughs> so, needless to say, we're going to have quite the endurance run for all of this. Yeah, um, let's see here. There's plenty of different readme files I have to, like, dig through. So, needless to say, we have a lot to do, um, a lot of different things and whatnot. I'm, I'm not even sure if this is, like, everything just here. Um, but yeah, we'll see, like, as I kind of dig through everything, what exactly there is. Um, hmm. So, basically, this patch is called Kemet's. I have no idea why in God's name it's called that. It's a rather weird name. Um, but it's basically a patch designed to add some variety to Deathmatch, but it's also cool in the regular game. It's basically a combination of a bunch of different patches, and this is basically the result. Um, so yeah, basically this will basically be a good representation of a lot of mods that we could see elsewhere, except, you know, one area, conveniently. <laughs> so, very convenient for just hunting around, and probably stuff that we've seen before as well. Anyway, um, it's basically a combination of code of multi-skins, given three, J-feed, and different things like that. Um... So anyway, you can basically run, like, keymits.bat to basically run the file, apparently. That's interesting enough. Um, do, do I actually have to, like, manually run the batch file, or can I, like, ignore that? I'm not sure why I need to run the batch file, but that's kind of weird. Um, so I'm actually going to do... Sm uh, the smartest thing to do would be to copy this, so that way I'm not messing up the original folder. And I'm going to basically link out to this and try and run like the batch file in DOS bots or something. See what exactly happens. I'm not even sure if it will do much of anything, but I'm hoping it will. I just do not have much hope for this. So yeah, let's see here. I'll kill that. I'll kill this. That way you can actually see what's going on here. And hopefully it runs something. Oh, ego command quake. Yeah, see, it, it really is like... Really, the way it's kind of designed is like a bad idea. Hmm. Illegal command quake. Why is it illegal command? Um, hmm, maybe if I do a CD to it, first of all. So let's see here. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch to D. I'm going to CD um, into keymets. Instead of just going directly there. And then we're going to run that. Okay, let's try that and see if it causes something to happen. Oh, we go command quake. Yeah, hmm. That that's kind of the problem now, isn't it? There's really no way to really like run this now, is it? Um, basically, yeah, you're basically intended to like run everything right in the main area. Honestly, I'd rather just manually install it. Yeah, trying to do it this way is going to make a mess. So I'm going to do is just manually install it. You know, really, all, all of it doesn't really matter. Like, it's all QC files, which QC files don't do much. Um, they're just going to run out the main thing. Let's see here. Let me check the batch file and actually see. Yeah, it's just going to run Quake Game Keymets. That's basically the entire batch file. So, um, nothing spectacular at all. It's just going to run it out. And we already have it set up. So, needless to say, it's a waste of time to try and do it that way. Let's actually just load up the regular game. <laughs> um, hooray for getting confused by that. Thanks a lot for that useless batch file. Anyway, as I was saying, it's a lot of combinations of different things. There is um, basically between impulses 200 to 218 here. So there's 18 different impulses to check out. As I said, this is a big one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, needless to say... You have a lot of different things or whatnot. Um, actually, no, never mind. What he's basically talking about is that if you uh, basically impulses 200 to 218 uh, allows you to start as that multi skin, curiously enough. But the problem is, if you switch to a new level, you have to redo the skin. That's kind of been the problem of multi skin with all these different versions. Um, yeah, that's been a consistent issue. 
And so yeah, this is the first actual mention of that issue blatantly in text right here. Um, if you switch levels, it's going to do something. And I'm in pain, so one second, people. <laughs> I know this is awkward, but at the same time, it'd be nice to kind of get things going so we am able to talk properly. Otherwise, I'm going to be screaming in pain and aching, and oh my god. Because this is a long haul, and I want to be ready for the long haul instead of trying to endure the long haul. Alright, that, that should be better. My mistake for that. Should have had that prepared, but in any event, there we are. We're ready. Let's see here. Um, anyway, like I said, to basically you have to change your skin every single time, which stinks. It entirely stinks. Basically, the way around it is to basically hard code it in there. You have to, like, go into your client.qc, and you can basically add, like, specific lines that set it to the individual skin. Of course, the problem with that is, you have no way of, like, manually changing the skin in-game. It's hard-coded to whatever it is. So basically, you lose the ability to have choice, but you get the skin that you wanted. It kind of stinks that you have to compromise like that, but there you are. <laughs> um, so yeah, needless to say, not exactly the nicest, but... Yeah, that's a thing. And yeah, multi-skin is a big feature of this one, but we don't really care about multi-skin because you can't even see it anyway. Um, and I've shown off, I believe, multi-skin in the past. If I haven't, really, it doesn't matter because it's just kind of like it's a scrollable list. Um, but yeah, let's see here. You also can use impulses 198 and 199 to change skins at will. Um... So yeah, you can basically toggle between the two different ones using um, the... D he basically recommends you use the square bracket keys to do it. And actually, they, yeah, that's actually a pretty useful one because that's really out of the way. Um, I was always using like my G and H keys, but that might make even more sense. Though now it doesn't really matter because I kind of got rid of the hard coding. Um, and yeah, I just basically set up what specific skin I want. Um... So yeah, he'll be adding various things as new things come out, and he actually will develop some of his own stuff. In addition, he's marked some lines of code um, that, if you run them out, will enable the Impulse 9 cheat and deathmatch. However, since the server controls it, that means that everyone can use the cheat. It's really kind of pointless, as it takes all the fun out of the game, but it's nice to know. And yeah, Impulse 9 and a Deathmatch, that's kind of useless for the server because really, Deathmatch intended stuff really doesn't matter server-wise. Um, because really, my server is pretty much entirely co-op. I don't even think we do Deathmatch games. So, needless to say, I'm not really like looking for like different stuff like that. And yeah, he marked different areas in case you don't want like doing different codes. So you can change it back if you don't want it and whatnot. Um, anyway... We have a lot of different stuff to check out. Let's actually like load up our DOS bots and I'm um, gonna see exactly some of this stuff. As I said, there's plenty of different things. So let's go through the list. Okay, first of all, if I go to like Impulse 199, that will change between our skins. Interestingly enough, it's actually shown in the upper left hand corner of the screen instead of the middle of the screen. Not sure I like that one. I actually prefer it being, um, Let's see here. Let's bind um, this key to impulse 198 and the other one to 199. So that way we can actually see it go back and forth. Instead of me just trying to talk about it quickly. Okay, so if you see here, Quake himself, Duke Nukem 3D. So you see, very, very similar to the other one, but at the same time, it's very on the left side of the screen as opposed to being in the middle. Like I said, I think I prefer it being in the middle just because it's a great menu to show as opposed to being kind of more out of the way. But I don't know. It feels like either or could kind of be good. Hmm. It's definitely a good debate. Do I want it more out of the way? Or do I want it more in the middle of the screen so you can kind of see? I mean, if you have it here, it's like if I do this or something like that and it's like... Man, I guess this works fine. 
You know, you get the ability just to have it shown right on the console side as opposed to being a message in the middle. Because the problem with messages in the middle is, say you have something like this, you can't exactly see uh, um, the message when you're doing something like this and have this message up. So maybe it's actually a bit more useful for that particular reason. See, so yeah, a little bug fits, I guess. Anyway, um, that's really all that is. Um, anyway... This is basically the first thing this guy did in um, QC, so it may be very lame. Anyway, he then explains how to do it, and yeah, if you don't want it, there's a way to like just decodify it out. But yeah, this is a little interesting feature apparently. You know, God, there's a fly on my screen. Why is there bloody flies in this room? Anyway, um, let's see here. God, I'm getting disoriented because of flies. Not, 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 not the time for this. We need to keep focus. Focus, people. We need... Where is a rocket launcher when you need one? I'm trying to think of it as a convenient rocket launcher in these maps. You know, that's actually a good question. <laughs> Where is there just like a straightforward, easy to grab rocket launcher? Even that mate seems like the closest I could think of offhand. Because it's literally right up there. So what I want to do is head right up there. The danger of my life. Run for it! Grab the rocket launcher and run for it! And here we are! To see when you shoot the rocket launcher, it shoots fish now! Yes, people, that's the big difference. It basically modifies the rocket launcher so instead of rocket projectiles, it shoots rock fish. Because. reasons! It shoots rat fish! Look at that! Fish! It shoots fish for some reason! Um... So, yeah, needless to say... Here we are, it's like a fish. You shoot the fish or something. And go fish! So as you see, um... Ju just very simple, it just changes the projectile. Otherwise, not really the biggest of changes in the world. Very, very pointless change. <laughs> Um, unless you want to shoot fish for some very strange reason. You know, this is basically known as a super duper wacky fish blower. Whatever God's name that means. But yeah, th there we are. Super duper wacky fish blower. Swim fish! Swim in the lava! I believe in you and your ability to swim! Okay, so let's see here. You can also, um, press, like, certain keys he set up for config to basically do god and all weapons and all that. Um, you can snipe, of course. You know, that was set up in this config file. He hopes to get a fish to swim while flying through the air. Instead of its spooning sound when it hits a target, it makes a nice little splat. But neither of those exist in this version. So really all it is is just a little projectile change. Not the biggest thing in the world. But as I said, that's pretty much it. So yeah, we have our multi-skin, which has been modified and is updated. This is actually like a newer version. As you see, there's 32 skins now, as opposed to 18. So it's almost like double. You know, not exactly double, that would be like, um, a couple more. But at the same time, it's getting up there, you know. <laughs> it, it's a pretty decent number of new skins just to play with. And that would definitely be nice to add to the multi-skin um, area of the Wickaya. Anyway, as I said, shooting fish, very, very pointless. Not, not a very big feature. What else is there? We have shooting fish. We have multi-skin. Um, let's see here. We also have, um... Let's see here. The next thing we should probably check out is this whole fiend thing. There's basically something called the fiend's pentagram. Which is a modification to the original Quake 1.01 Quake C code. Um, it basically makes the pentagram of protection into the fiend's pentagram. Picking up the pentagram will change you into a fiend. Your fiendish body will burst forth from your old body, spraying chunks of it everywhere. You thought fiends were tough when AI controlled? Wait until you see them in deathmatch. Learn to fear them. Better yet, Learn to hit them with a rocket. Ooh, so we can actually become a fiend. Um, so yeah. So yeah, this is version 1.1. Basically, it just fits an error, which would cause the ads to not work properly. 
Anyway, let's see here. Um, you can install it, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about how to install it because we kind of got it installed. Anyway, before we actually really begin, we have a bunch of different little details. And oh my god, I hear an ogre. That's probably bad news. But that means we have a victim! A victim to murder as a fiend. Let's see here. Um, you need to have the registered version to play uh, using this mod, of course. Um, the shareware version can play on the server using this mod with no problem. Anyway, the fiends are hard to hit. Make yourself a moving target. Jump a lot. This is the preferred means of transportation when you're a fiend. You can hurt people by jumping into them. Note that jumping makes a fiendish snorty sound that anyone nearby can hear. Don't jump if you're trying to be sneaky. Fiend swings are kinda slow, but painful. Hidden attack will make you swing if you're a fiend. You can tell if you're swinging because there's a soft swishing sound, and your view moves up and down a bit. Oh, and whoever is standing in front of you starts yelping in pain. Okay then, so that, that's apparently how we're going to attack and jump around. Good to know because our power up lasts only a limited amount of time. Apparently it lasts though for two minutes. Um, and of course, if you want to become a fiend again, you're going to need to get that again. Um... So let's see here. So here we are, we just gimped, and now we're a feed. And now we are, we're a freaking feed. And oh god, is it weird, it's zero gram vertical of all things. Because we can jump really fast, and really far. Oh god, this is probably a bad idea in this map. Time to murder some ogres. Oh god, the feed's powerful. Of course, this is probably the worst map ever to do it on, so what I want to do is actually do it on some other map. Just because this was a bad idea. Um, and I want to see the fiend's full potential. I want to see him, like, against a shambler. So here we are. Now, there isn't exactly a pentagram here, but there is a cheat that allows you to basically do it by using Impulse 254, apparently. Which does the exact same thing. Um, so try looking up and jumping. Fiends can jump really high. Use this to your fiendage advantage. It's also useful for making a quick escape when those pesky humans can't follow you. Anyway, also a good thing to know, fiends don't like water. Water Earth does a good job of keeping a fiend from jumping. Avoid it. Fiends also have trouble getting out of the water. They don't seem to be able to get out of some places without clawing their way out. Some places you'll have to attack as you're trying to get out. Some, some have to do with the view height. If you know how it fits this, let us know. You fiend! Lesson learned, do not feed jump into its spine! Yo, know, but yeah, even worse would be, of course, if you get quad damage. Because that's a fiend combined with quad damage means maximum damage! Oh, God. So anyway, yeah, Impulse 254, and you immediately become a fiend. Amazing. Let's go murder some things. You see, just jump around like a maniac. Amazing way to jump around the level like a maniac. In fact, it might be a bit too crazy. Because you're so freaking overpowered. And there we are, just jump to feed. We're just murdering all these feeds, aren't we? There we are, free armor. Of course, I'm not sure if armor even matters when you're feed. Amazing. But yeah, there we are. A bunch of different fiend combat. Anyway, beyond all this, there's also a few other mods added in here. Um, such as enhanced team play. This allows more flexibility in the team play. All the old functionality has been preserved. That is, team play 0 and 1 do the same thing. Setting it negative will cause players to lose frags when they uh, kill teammates. So if you set like team play to negative 1, that would like make them to lose frags or something like that. 
The value of it will indicate how many frags players should lose. For example, if I kill my teammate when teammate set to negative 5, I'll lose f neg 5 frags. Send team play to 100 will cause players who get kill their players to explore their go glorious shower of gems. Neither player will gain or lose any frags. Send team player to negative 100 will cause such offenders to explode and lose one frag. So alright, a lot of different craziness indeed. Um, so yeah. Also we have Electro Rats, which has 50 instead of 20 damage, and will use cells if you have any. Um, it's basically commented out in the code. Um, you can edit back in by editing a certain file, but I doubt it's there for right in here right away. No, actually I have to like comment it back in. Wait, never mind. It's user five cells every time I attack him. So let's see here. Fighting a shamble is probably not the best of ideas. So let's see here. Impulse nine it. Now we have a hundred cells, well two hundred cells, and every five cells, it will also do fifty damage apparently. So it's like trying to cause damage to this guy. And there we are! Anti-climatic, because we do more than twice the amount of damage with the Electro Rats. Definitely don't like that. I don't like having such an overpowered weapon. Fiend mode sounds like it could be a lot of fun. I mean, that's absolutely hilarious for trying to do, like, um, a Quake. But, you know, having su such an overpowered thing we can just massacre things so quickly, it's a bit overpowered, and definitely not good. Huh, our corpse is solid now? Oh, what just happened? That's interesting. You can actually hack corpses up. That corpse actually required me to chop it to pieces. That's interesting. Wonder if that's for all of them. Yes, yes it is indeed. You can chop up any corpse you want and just basically rip it to shreds. Much better than it just automatically breaking. You can into pieces. It's quite a nice little feature. I support that one. Okay, and we also have cluster bounce proximity grenades. Um, the grenade launcher fires cluster bombs that burst apart into nasty hop and proximity mines. Um, this was also commented in initially, but Um, so yeah, this one seems to be the regular one. I'd have to, like, modify the code for this one to see. So anyway, that's the Fiend's Pentagram mod in that shell. Um, and that's really, yeah, some comments, blah, blah, blah. That's really that. Anyway, um, also, that was basically Jibbin 3. That's what makes, um, Monster Solid and Jibbable after death. Um... See, so yeah, the Bounder Bots and some monsters now realistic if you walk across them, instead of having to jump... I mean, you can walk across them instead of having to jump over them. He playtested every single monster for this. Lots of work. Um, bodies can now pile on top of each other. Need effect when you have a pile of dead bodies and you shoot a grenade into it. Boom and splatter. Lowers the amount of health for monsters after death. Way more jibs, especially zombies. Uh, different jib combinations for different monsters. And crucified zombies can be killed. Which we've kind of been doing already. I've shown that one off before. Um, but yeah, specifically zombies in particular are a lot more jibbable. Interesting. Hello, friends! Have fish! And if we go back to start, you can see the other one. I probably should have just kept the same stuff, but oh well. Here, I have fish! Amazing. So anyway, um, basically after you kill a monster, walk over to it, take the yacht, chop it to pieces. Um, you can also shoot the nail gun into it by and watch the bloody pieces of meat fly. Monsters are solid and chippable. Um, so yeah, he can't really take any credit for doing the real coding, he's just beginning to learn it. 
Um, someone else, Chef Epler, made most of this stuff. Um, and he's also going to have way cooler stuff than this later, be warned. Um, so yeah, beyond all this, they still haven't tackled the player object. They were also thinking of adding a jib and teleport effect when a player gets his new body. But they don't deathmatch much, and they're afraid of breaking something. The fish and um, spawn are just like before. They don't have chip, chip animations, they're written a little different. Besides, he hasn't played far enough to run into them yet. The bodies themselves stay the same, between death, and chip to pieces. It'll be this way unless someone designs models with arms, legs, and whatnot chopped off. A tall order. Anyway, so yeah, then you have basically installation stuff and whatnot. Um, he modified um, various monster files and added different things. Um, yeah, it's basically telling you all the technological stuff that really doesn't matter to us. Um, he found out ways to make monsters invincible and do all these different little things. But yeah, nothing really that's important beyond the technical. Anyway, so that's really all that. So that's the fiend, that's the fish, that's that. That's most of mods, actually. Wow. That went a lot quicker for some reason. Oh yeah, and then we also have multi-skin, um, which, like I said, we've already kind of been doing, so... Multi-skin isn't exactly, like, a big thing, but there's actually a readme file for it. That's interesting. I didn't know there was actually a readme file for multi-skin. Um, so yeah. I was, just like everybody else, hoping that players could have their own skin textures when Quake came out. But it was impossible. Then the Quake C compiler and Quake C code were released. And man, it has to be possible now. So I started trying. Um, you tried doing set model. It didn't work as you'd require multiple mo uh, models. Wasted a lot of bytes. And Quake would crash if you didn't have them. It's explain the fir uh, fact that a model can change in eyes, he tried to do, because it would require all models, waste a lot of bites, and Quake would crash if you didn't have them. Um, so yeah, he tried using the idea of that models can have different skins, and it worked. You just need to have one player model file, and all the files in it. Um, if you don't have the new player model, no problem, you'll just see the normal textures instead. As he improves the code, and team play corpses with correct skins and whatnot, only the servers will need to update. All the clients, players, need is the new player.mdl, which works just like the normal player.mdl. But if you connect to a multi-skin server, suddenly the models um, will have all sorts of skins. So, there is a bug, though, that the skin will only apply to the body your soul is in. As soon as your soul transfers to a new body, such as respawns, the corpse skin will change to the normal texture. But he will fix this, and it's not crucial, vital, or important at all. Um, so yeah, if you're a player, all you really need is, is you know, the player.mdl file. Um, and yeah, then he tells you basically how to do it for a dedicated server. He you know, basically do it all for these different um, versions, which we don't really care about. Um, so yeah, then you basically use Impulse 200. You basically swap between them. Um, and yeah, that, that's really all that. that. That's really simple, isn't it? So anyway, that's really not much to it, is it? Um, the skin will travel with you, so if you respawn, you will keep the same skin, and you will get a message telling you what skin you're wearing. Um, so yeah, basically, there's a list of different um, sk skins or whatnot. So we basically have a giant list of all the different ones that are um, included with it, which is interesting because we don't really have any, um, like, ones that they are. Um, very interesting indeed to have all these different texts and whatnot, but really not important for us because, like I said, we can't even really see, um, all this stuff anyway. So, you could also make new skins with the monsters, such as one with weaker health, one with, um, some extra blood, one with lots of blood and gore and whatnot, to do different things to health. That's basically a suggestion I make anyway. Um, and then you think a lot of people who do different stuff, and your skin will change the instant you impulse 200. 
Team play is still color oriented. A dude can still kill a dude. Whenever a player respawns, the skin of his former corpse will change back into the standard skin. So yeah, definitely important to know or whatnot. Um, so anyway, he plans to add team play for the skin instead of colors to add the option to only allow skin changes when the player is dead to avoid some team server problems. Have corpses keep the right skins. Um, update the textures with the axe fire drawn on them and adding more textures. Um, so yeah, lots of different things and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, people have been complaining about a lot of things, and they're getting fixed all the time. Weapons stink! Now we have a bunch of different stuff, such as proximity grenades and whatnot, and more stuff is just coming up. Grenades should go through teleporters. Done! It was a quake limitation. Just quite a little editing, and someone has already done it. Just let's fire a stream of nails through a teleporter. Monster player and corpses should be solid. Not only can they be solid, but they're also jibberable. Um, bullet holes? He's been working on this one. Right now, he can use the bubble sprite as a bullet hole. And when he fires um, the super shotgun eight times, he gets a packet overflow because of 300 bubbles on the wall. He'll figure something out. Um, it's just basically a sprite when the bullet hits the wall, so it's pretty simple. Um, different skins for each player are done. Yo, interconnected Quake servers? Done! Only problem, if the server rejects you, you end up in the console. But John Carmack seems to be working on a real dedicated big standalone server, so it's only a matter of time. Um, so yeah, plenty of different stuff and whatnot as you see added. Um, yeah, amazing, right? And yeah, needless to say, been adding a lot of different skins and whatnot. And... Yeah, he it basically both client QC and Quake the weapons QC are clearly marked. Add all whatnot as you wish. Blah blah blah. And uh, I think it'd be best to stick to these textures for internet play, because then you can be certain everyone has the same skins. Uh, for local LAN parties, you can put your favorite skins into the model. Um, so yeah, other than that, really not much, like I said, multi-skin, we've kind of already been seeing that one. Anyway, really, yeah, that was a lot, a lot of reading for no real purpose, but at the same time, I had to figure out what exactly all this stuff is. There's just a bunch of different files, and life, as you see, is very useless, but that's beside the point. I thought there was a lot more to this than there is. But, um, anyway... I have to get my butt kicked a few times as, uh, The Fiend, 25 to negative 2 by my roommate, I decided my, the demon needed to be a wee bit tougher. Um, basically, all I can uh, say now is you better kill it before it gets anywhere near you. And I changed the pentagram so it acts like a mega health box. The main problem with the fiend is that it doesn't have a long range weapon. So against three guys with rockets, well, it needed to be tougher. An interesting side note is that the level ends with someone as the fiend, everyone who's not a demon or a fiend, will see his arms and legs sticking out from that vantage camera angle. Kinda funny. Um, the text with the multi-skin is cycling over and not leaving the ski, uh, screen. It gets annoying so he disabled it. Um, and he was planning to fix it for the next version. This was in 1.1, so in 1.2 hopefully he fixed it. Seems like he does. Um, he would like to add various weapons, but the source code is in those. You'll have to contact the authors and beg it from them. Apparently he didn't really succeed now, did he? Anyway, um, in 1.2, you got the bunch of new skins. Pretty cool! Pretty funny seeing a quick dude in a suit. Fits the weird text errors he was getting. Funny how you can still fit things if you change, you know, just by different characters and whatnot. Anyway, you can notice that he noticed that you can now jib the zombies that hang on the wall. He's not sure how that happened, but it's pretty cool. He had some new weapons and a toggle. Hook a key up to Impulse 63. Um, when you switch to a grenade launcher or the rocket launcher, hit Impulse 63, a toggle between the different available weapons. Alright. That, that's actually pretty important. See, this is why I read this stuff. Because, as you see, <laughs> just a minor little detail like that, and it was all hidden in there. So let's see here. So um, all you do is, now I want to find like H to Impulse 63, 
And we'll have the ability to toggle between stuff. Let's see here. I'm not sure if I actually like did it right. As you see, there we are. Normal grenades are pipe bombs, which is just like all the other pipe bombs that we've been seeing. We've seen a bunch of different pipe bombs. Um, it basically set it off using Impulse 62. So, they all go off as you die, suicide, or connect as well. Anyway, proximity mine grenades are grena uh, enabled. Burn too hard to disable if you think they're too much for deathmatch. Remember, you can kill yourself with them just as easily. So let's see here. Proximity mines are like this. Whatever that means. Oh my god! Oh my god, there are grenades everywhere! Dear god, this is crazy. Oh, the humanity of it all! Just grenades bouncing everywhere. Amazing. Okay, so that, that that's dangerous. Anyway, that's that. We also have our normal rockets, which is our fish, and also drunk missiles for, um, it's basically like Rise of the Triad. If you've ever played that one, I would never have. Anyway, there's code in there for them to be homing missiles, but it didn't work too well. It stunk for deathmatch anyway, so we made it go away. And there we are, freaking drunk missiles. They just go everywhere. As you see, they're pretty homing anyway. Can you like shoot a grenade into a teleporter? No, no you can't. Yeah, the code for that one is kind of broken, the last one I saw. Also, you have the regular super nail gun or the super laser gun. Something he actually wrote himself, which does a bit more damage, but takes three cells a shot. Uh, he couldn't get rid of the nail tink sound, so when you a laser hits, you or a wall, you hear both sounds. Pretty odd. Anyway, you can select the super nail gun, even if you don't have any nails, but you have cells. It'll give you a message if you switch to the laser gun, but don't have any cells. Um, so let's see here. See if that works. Well, let's see here. Give C 200 or so. And now if I do like... Let's see here. Then again, that's right. It's basically if you have like no nails, but you have cells. So let's see here. Like... If I do like impulse 9 or something like that... I just waste the nails. There we go. Let's waste the regular nail supply. So I have like no nails whatsoever. There we are. Switch to super nails automatically. Amazing, right? Anyway, that's basically the super laser gun, which definitely yeah another overpowered gun for the reason of it just being there. Yeah, all these weapon modes really don't serve much of a purpose, and as you see, are really highly overpowered for single player. So he put in a patch that lets you fire through teleporters, but it was buggy and would crash quick if you started level E2M1. Um, it does it with the original patch, so it's not his error. Has to find a new one. This won't be finished without it. There's code in there for the kicking patch, but it doesn't work at all. Oh well, something else affects. Anyway, there's also um, bits of bug that you can get more shells than you had, and you could actually get below zero ammo and wrap around like 255 or 254. You didn't actually get that ammo. The bug was in the original game code for the original uh, super shotgun, actually. So, needless to say, not really sure why exactly you would be firing more shells than you had. Um, yeah, I guess if you were like impulse nighting it, that's how you really do it. Something like that. Anyway, you'll add more weapons as you find good ones. He wants to get a hold of like certain other weapons or whatnot. The whole point is to make cooler deathmatch games. If you have cool patches you'd like to add or cool ideas, feel free to send me mail. Have fun!
Um, but remember to look up from the monitor every couple of hours. Play quick too much, and you'll go blind! If you have any cool source code, such as working code for the teleporters, write bugs to report, send them to me. Anyway, so that's really it, as you see. Um, plenty of different little features here and there. Um, not much that's actually useful. As I said, the Fiend thing, really freaking overpowered. All the new guns, just like most other gun things, are really overpowered as well. Um, so yeah, needless to say, we already have, like, the kill zombies or whatnot. Maybe, like... Maybe have the zombies gym more. I'm not really sure about that one or whatnot. But yeah, needless to say, most things just not really that useful. Maybe the enhanced team play would be useful to like have it so that way like players could like lose frags when they kill you. Um, that might be useful to add to a server. But yeah, most things here like proximity grenades and electro rats and all that just really bloody overpowered. <laughs> so needless to say, I'm, I'm just gonna, not gonna bother with a lot of it. And like I said, fiends, fiend cheats are really overpowered. So really, at the end of the day, the only thing that's really useful is probably that one little thing there uh, for team play. And multi-skin, which is definitely nice and whatnot. Having the updated multi-skin code is definitely beneficial. Anyway, um, th uh, thank you all for watching and whatnot, people. It's been adventure as usual, and I shall see you all next time.